Well, hi everyone. My name is Alexander Jarman and on behalf of the Welland Museum of Art at Hamilton College, it's my pleasure to be speaking with one of our upcoming artists, Joshua Kloss. His exhibition will be debuting at the museum in the spring of 2022, which may seem far off, but the show is going to feature all new work, which means Joshua is already busy creating uh, these new woodcuts uh, and, and sculptures for the Welland Museum of Art. So we wanted to just take a few minutes and check in with you, Joshua, uh, about what you're working on and talk a little bit about who you are as an artist. So Joshua, first and foremost, thanks for taking the time to join me today. Hey, thank you, Alexander, no problem. Um, I wanted to start off with something that you know I'm very excited about. Um, as a person who particularly loves jazz music, but you uh, had one of your own artworks featured on the most recent release by jazz artist Kendrick Scott, and it actually won a big award as the best uh, jazz album cover of the year. Um, so do you want to walk me through sort of how that process happened and, and uh, what it meant to you to sort of work with someone outside of the visual art realm. Yeah, I mean, that was so cool. That's like such an honor. Um, so it's, it's just, I think it's cool as an artist to get those unexpected honors and awards. That's not necessarily something I thought about um, in my studio was winning best uh, jazz album cover, but it's a, it's a very sweet thing to ha happen. Um, I was introduced to Kendrick through uh, another jazz musician named Jason Moran. Um, my gallerist, uh, Jack Tilton, uh, when he was living, uh, took me to a Jason Moran show and um, I just fell in love with that guy's music and we kept in touch, but he's also friends with, with Kendrick. So Kendrick needed an album cover and Jason pointed him to me. We just had a, a, a quick meeting at my studio and he really liked the work. He selected the image, Blue Notes Records licensed it. Um, and I was really honored to kind of do the history on Blue Note Records album covers and realize that it's a thing. Like it's a, it's a, it's a special thing. It's, it's, Blue, Blue Notes is known for some really interesting and innovative jazz album covers. So to be considered in that lineage is, is quite an honor. And now obviously I'm like so much a fan of Kendrick's music. I mean, the music is incredible. He had this theme about a wall becoming a bridge, which I think says a lot about the times that we're in, sort of um, breaking down barriers and uh, making connectivity with what's available. It's, uh, it's incredible to think too, you know, as artists, we make these works and we hope they get out into the world and your image being a, a jazz album cover now means that that image is all over the world. It's in people's uh, homes, it's in their cars, you know, wherever they have the CD. So it, um, it kind of uh, is, is a new level in terms of distribution of, of your work out to the world. Um, oh, cool. I, I wanted to um, I wanted to get to some of the things that you're working on for your show at the Welland. So I was wondering if you could kind of um, just talk briefly about um, sort of your idea for the show and then how that um, is manifesting itself into physical artworks. Yeah, sure. So I guess I could give the long version or the short version, Alexander? What, which, which way do you think we should go? I know time is limited here. Um, I, think, I think you should give us the juicy version. The juicy, okay. So, and it, it's, I think it's juicy, uh, short and short, short, short version as well. So I'll try to condense, but um, my background is that uh, I was raised by amazing, hardworking, single parent mom on the south side of Chicago. Um, I was raised uh, as an only child, in fact, uh, without my father being present. Um, 
and I'm biracial black. My mother who raised me is white. My father is black African-American. I grew up in a predominantly black neighborhood, South side of Chicago. Um, but was estranged from my dad and from his side of the family. So uh, while my mother was the most resourceful uh, woman that I, I know, she was, she made family uh, from close friends and, and uh, just, you know, a group of, of other single parent moms who were just also amazing and uh, resourceful. Uh, I just didn't grow up with that side of the family. So here I am, uh, 42 years old. I did a DNA test and uh, got a Facebook message saying, hey, we think we're related. Um, and that turned into uh, a quick catch up love fest between me and my father's side of the family, which I never knew, never fathomed that I would be in touch with. So um, my father was one of 15 and they all had kids. So it's a huge family, which was really like, really rocked my world just being again, an only child and raised by my mama. All of a sudden I, I ha I'm a brother of someone brother of three people. I'm an uncle. I'm a nephew. Uh, I'm a great uncle. You know, I didn't even know what that meant. Great uncle. I had to kind of, you know, ask about that because <laughs> there's all these titles that I, I, and positions in a family that are very quickly inherited. So my, 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 my mind was spinning, but my heart was full. It was a loving and accepting experience. And honestly, I felt like I hit the lottery. Right, I felt like I was rich with this huge loving family all of a sudden. Um, as a visual artist, obviously I translate my experiences in the world uh, and filter them through my own psyche visually. So for me, this project comes from really negotiating my position in a family that I've been estranged from. Uh, so the project is kind of spawned out of the need to make a visual family tree uh, from all of this experience. Um, my family uh, migrated from the South, from Memphis, to Detroit, Michigan, like many African American families, to work for the Detroit auto plant for Ford Motors. So I've used the Diego Rivera Detroit Industry Mural as the scaffolding, as the backdrop for this family tree. Um, and I'm using woodblock prints to recreate that skeleton, that, that scaffolding, that backdrop and also to make these portraits of my family members and uh, replace Diego's, what he depicted at that time, 1933, when he made the mural was a mostly white male workforce, which was accurate during that time, but quickly changed. So um, I'm replacing his uh, white male workers with my uh, black family members that used Ford Motor Company as, uh, as, as in, in a way, as the, as, the, as the soil in which to plant this family, uh, to replant the family from their migration. So, um, you know, the work, the work is about that. It's very personal, but it's also very, very much a part of American history. This is uh, kind of uncovering the layers of uh, invisible labor that African Americans have built um, the American industry and American economy with. So uh, it's just it's a, it's a very uh, moving experience for me. This this whole process of uh, reaching out to family members, getting portraits from them, or the ones that I can't get in touch with, finding portraits of them from Facebook and social media. Um, but it's it's been helping the whole project is really allowing me to build bridges into the family. I think the, the main piece, the mural, is kind of a byproduct of so much labor on my end as far as trying to connect with family. 
So the mural sort of becomes this, uh, this indication of how much labor uh, we're all doing in order to, to remain a family and to, to stay together. Well, certainly, I mean, you know, you and I have talked about it. the great migration. I mean, it radically transformed so many of our cities in this country um, and really is essential uh, to understand if you want to uh, really have a, a grasp on sort of how our society, how our cities um, exist today. Uh, so much of it goes back to that, that great migration story. And then in terms of, of your personal story, I mean, just what an incredible narrative. Uh, I'm still, I'm, I'm sure you're still kind of swimming in all of the, the unknowns and things you want to discover about that side of your family. Oh, absolutely. And it's just, it's just been an amazing experience to feel so, to have so much family all of a sudden and to be, to be embraced uh, and to be welcomed in has really been, uh, like I said, you know, it's basically like hitting the lottery and uh, just feel very, very lucky and honored.